You know, as with all these considerations, when you deploy landing zones, it, it's really important to understand the requirements of the application itself, um, you know, when they're hosted in Azure. So various factors come into the mix when we, we talk about this. So, you know, the amount you're storing in data, um, the, ac the accessibility of that data and, you know, how frequently that data is accessed. Um, so a good starting point, but again, not always a must, um, is to look at the technologies you're using on premises and you could choose to replicate them in Azure. Um, for example, if, if you're using SQL 2008 on premises or 2012, you could look at implementing a newer version of SQL in Azure. So moving that to SQL 2017, um, or, you know, the, the latest and greatest version at, at the time you, you choose to move them to Azure. Uh, if you use another technologies such as MySQL, again, this is absolutely fine. These can be replicated to Azure as well. Um, sometimes customers would, would rather use the technologies that their staff are trained on um, in, when they move them to the cloud. You know, if, if you're already if you're already moving to the cloud, the, the last thing you want to do is, is inco incorporate further change into the environment at the same time so you know if, if you're using mysql you may not want to move straight to, to sql server um so you could choose to to move mysql into azure as well and again the it depends on the applications if if they're configured to use a mysql database you may not want to change them applications to use a different technology so um you know that that's another reason why why you could keep the same in azure but just maybe modernize it a bit so a few key questions to consider when when moving your databases to Azure are um, so do your workloads currently use SQL if so um, you could use a few different options so you've got uh, standard infrastructure as a service SQL on virtual machines uh, so this is where SQL is installed onto the virtual machine itself or you could migrate it from on-premises to Azure if you've got the correct license in um, for this method, you charge for the compute, so obviously for the virtual machine that SQL stored on, as well as the storage. And then obviously, if you haven't got software assurance with your SQL licenses on premises, um, you you will need to pay for additional licenses to replace them. But if if you've got software assurance anyway, that's that's really good. You can actually move your SQL servers into Azure. Um, so the next option, so you've got SQL Platform as a Service. Uh, so as with most of Platform as a Service, Microsoft look after the infrastructure for you. So that's a really good, a really good benefit if it um, removes the, the requirement of patching. Um, and then you look after the database configuration yourself. So you don't need to worry about uptime um, patching. You just need to worry about the configuration of the database and, and how that works and how it's um, optimized to work with your application. Um, the next one, so SQL database managed instance. So this again is a, a platform as a service uh, strategy to hosting your, your database in the cloud, um, but it's slightly different to the SQL um, Azure SQL database and the fact that it's it always uses the latest and greatest, which is the same as the Azure SQL database. Um, but it actually gives you near 100% of the capability that on-premises will give you. Um, so we, we see quite a lot when customers are moving from or moving their applications or, or databases from on-premises to Azure SQL database. We see quite a lot of incompatibilities. So when you come to do that migration, you know, when you use the database migration assistant or whether you do it manually by exporting and importing the databases, um, you see quite a lot of things in the database, whether it's tables, queries that need to change. With um, with managed instance, it, it gives you the near 100% of what you're running on premises. So the, the migration can actually be a lot smoother than, than moving it to the SQL database. Um, so that that's really good. But again, just, just be aware of when you're using these platform as a service options that they are using the latest and greatest SQL version at the time you implement it. So you know, you can't choose to just use 2016 SQL, it, it will use the, the newest one. Um, so another thing to think about if you use your data for analytics purposes, so Azure SQL Data Warehouse can store petabytes upon petabytes of data. Um, 
and then obviously if your data is unstructured as well you can use technologies such as Azure Data Lake that can sort and then analyze this data and then you can use you know your your analytics software so maybe you use power bi to to hook into the data warehouse and data data lake services and you, you you'll get visual insights into the data which which is always nice it's it's one thing having the data but when you can visualize it it really gives it a, a different side to it and uh, again you know ensure with everything in landing zones that to, to make sure that the technologies you're looking to use so whether that's data lake data warehouse you know managed instance just make sure it's available in the region that you, that you want to move to obviously before you start to plan you know moving databases into a certain strategy and again you know we're, we're talking about databases here that's storing data just just make sure that the data sovereignty requirements that you've got uh, you're thinking about that when when moving into it and then locking that down with Azure policy so that the compliance and the um, and the strategy you choose can't be breached. <laughs>